Hi, my name is Chris Benjamin. I'm the author of Eco Innovators Sustainability in Atlantic Canada. Now, in Atlantic Canada, more than 90% of the food that we eat is imported from other regions and especially from other countries. That has a huge environmental impact in terms of transportation, carbon emissions, but it also makes us dependent on faraway sources, companies and countries for the food that we need to survive and that's a vulnerable position. But here at Local Source, uh, which is a store in the north end of Halifax owned by Sean Gallagher, all the food that you see is produced locally, except of course the coffee. And Sean Gallagher has developed relationships with the farmers and fishers of our region to ensure that the food is produced in the most sustainable way possible. So for the consumer, that means we can trust where our food is coming from and we know we're supporting the locals and farmers and fishers who need our support to make a living. And it also means that the overall environmental impact of our food is greatly reduced. Originally we started a catering company called Terroir, which means wine speak, taste of the region, the microclimate, what makes wine taste particular on one bank versus the other bank, and applying it to food, so, you know, a, a local taste. And just out of thin air, I pulled local source catering as a descriptor for that. This is our catering kitchen. This is where we, when we moved here five years ago, this is all we focused on. This is where all the magic happens and all of our work. Uh, we are first and foremost the catering company, so this is where we cook things that go off-site. Whether it's for a wedding or for a simple lunch meeting, this is where it all happens. I mean, people in the neighborhood are happy that we opened a storefront. That was an afterthought. I mean, it was based on their request for us to open a storefront. Originally, I just wanted to have a private dining room where people could come and eat delicious, multi-course dinners paired with great wines made with local food. Um, that's my background and my expertise. So opening up kind of our storefront was a whole new business venture and um, eye-opener because it is a service. It is something that I grew up with in Ottawa, having a, a high street where you could go to the, the butcher on the corner and get your bacon. Um, you could get eggs and go down the street and you can pick up your fresh bread daily if you wanted to. So, I mean, I, that's super valuable for me as part of a neighborhood to, to get back to small uh, artisanal types of shops that are specialists. So Wednesday is a nice busy day because we have a bunch of CSA customers coming in to pick up their weekly boxes, so we make calzones. We've put away the tomato sauce in jars and use it for our internal cooking needs. Um, calzones, there's, there's always the fiducia, which means trust the chef, and that's a special that rotates. They're delicious, people love them. Um, but we bake every day for cafes, uh, and for our catering and for the shop. The way we sell most of our meat now uh, is that we have a little twist on the community supported agriculture concept, uh, which we call the grass fed meetup. Uh, basically, people go to our website and order whatever products they want, and if they do it by Monday, then we bring them in every Wednesday and meet the people who order the meat with their orders uh, at a few different locations. One of those locations is Local Source Market in Halifax. Awesome. That's probably the most popular one and the one that we've been uh, 
going to for the longest. It's been about, uh, well, two years now. And sales are really good that way. And it just seems to be a, a simple, straightforward way for people to order meat and for us to sell it. Here's a little lamb born in March <laughs> before the grass was starting. And now we've just got them out on pasture here. Uh, a couple weeks ago, had them out for the 1st of May. And you can see he's got quite a big belly. <laughs> His mama's milking lots of milk now on this fresh grass. And uh, I think he's probably nibbling a little bit himself. Most people who farm cattle or sheep or pigs or whatever, they, they don't get to meet their customers. They sell on what's called the commodity market, where everybody sells for a kind of a, a price that the market defines. And uh, me, I, I just get to uh, go and, and uh, take the meat directly to the people who eat it. So uh, the market that we cater to, it's, it's the people specifically looking for uh, naturally raised animals. So um, our customers are fantastic people, loyal people. They, they care about the treatment of the animals uh, that they're eating and, um, and the relationship um, with uh, the farmer is very important. A lot of people um, love to meet us when we go into, into the city. So um, there is a connection there. Um, there's a connection between the animals, uh, the, our, our farmers and, and the animals. So it's, it's like a one big happy circle. <laughs> it seems like um, we, we're really kind of disconnected in general as a society from where our food comes from. This is one way that we can really sort of start to restore that connection. A lot of the people who buy the meats end up coming out to the farm at least once a year, have a participate in the Provincial Open Farm Day. And uh, last year we had about 200 folks show up with their in families of all sorts and uh, walked around with the cattle and the sheep and talked about uh, how the animals are raised and uh, it's, it's really a, an eye-opener for a lot of people. Big box stores are the way that the food industry has evolved over the last 50 years. When you break it down and you understand it, it's really, really scary on how big it is and how um, long the chain is and how many people are involved every step of the way and the people that are actually growing the food or the the regions where the food is being grown is not necessarily benefiting from the end users purchase of that food so shortening that connection and kind of reconnecting people with something that's more real that's authentic food we're simply trying to tell the story and say this is where it came from they look good, Alex. Small, but nice. Um, Sean Gallagher, who owns the business, will buy um, just various things, different things that I have in season. I will supply him with some greens as well in the winter time out of greenhouses. Also, spring vegetables out of these fields. He'll be taking vegetables out of these fields this week as well. And, um, and then those vegetables are used in his kitchen. They're used in his production in his catering and also um, some uh, sold retail in his shop. Um, in the winter time you may end up with carrots and sweet potatoes and squash. Nice to know where they come from. And maybe some cabbage and some apples and if you're lucky a bag of spinach out of a greenhouse. Um, in the summertime you'll be eating a lot of tomatoes and cucumbers and zucchini. Um, in the fall it's going to be broccoli and cauliflower. In the spring um, you're going to be eating exactly what you see in the field behind me. That is the nature of a CSA. Um, it is, it's interesting in the sense that a lot of families with children have signed on to it. Families with children will sign on and they will say, you know, we want our children to understand that radishes are a spring summer crop. In the winter time, we eat vegetables that have been grown the previous fall. Um, in the summertime, you eat tomatoes and cucumbers, and maybe we shouldn't be eating tomatoes and cucumbers in the middle of the winter. So there's an educational aspect 
of the CSA that I think many, many people on it get and got when they signed on to the CSA, but also many people have said, wow, this is really an eye-opening experience to be on this. So we're entering the darkest days of the year right now. Sometimes it's hard to come by greens. This is a brilliant green called MASH that is full of texture and is a delicacy all across Europe. In France, at every farmer's market, you'll always get a small variety that you can put on top of your food or as an accompaniment. So we, luck we luckily have a farmer in Tatamagush who grows this for us. And we're kind of like, as soon as it's available, please give it to us. We'll buy everything you have because it's so delicious. Yeah, people who's, who shop at local source are generally excited when the seasons are changing. Uh, there's moments in the darkest months of winter where there's no greens to be found locally, and we have a few stashed away. And so when there's, when there's this uh, great drought of you know, fresh things, we still have it available. And I, people are excited to come here because they, maybe they feel like they're part of that movement and that connection to our local food economy and its growth and strength and ability to kind of carry itself forward so that they can keep making that decision that is a, a, a simple but profound decision on a daily basis on how to eat.